Well, hi everyone, this is Bob the Science Guy, and it's time that I weigh in on the final experiment. Now, I do have two quick suggestions for experiments to be performed during the final experiment in Antarctica. Uh, I've designed them specifically to use very minimal equipment and to take into account the very cold environment that they'll be dealing with in December at 80 degrees south. Now, the first device that I've designed is a modified sundial. Now, I designed this using a very large mock-up like this, but you can easily build this out of a paint stirrer and a block of wood and a screw and a little bit of hot glue. Now the purpose of this is to show that the sun never goes below the horizon and this can obviously be photographed. It consists of a nail, a piece of wood, and a backstop. Now the lowest that the sun will get in Antarctica during December of 2024 is about 12 degrees off the horizon. So if this nail is two inches high, that shadow will extend out almost five feet. As a result of that, and to make it more compact, I incorporated this backstop. Now, what I would do is I would measure the height of this nail, and I would mark it on the backstop. And then, as long as you point the nail towards the sun, the shadow of that nail will appear on the backstop below the level of the nail that you've marked. Now it's a very simple matter to set this up. You basically point it towards the sun and then you reach into your parka pocket and pull out a spirit level, generally a torpedo level that's about six inches long, and then level it and then just see where the shadow goes. If it's below the mark, the sun is obviously above the horizon. This can be photographed and time stamped. Now doing this on a smaller scale, obviously you could get something about the size of a paint stirrer, you'd hot glue a nail on this side and you'd hot glue a small piece of wood on this side perpendicular to the paint stirrer. And as a result of that, you could easily put a small torpedo level on this, make sure that it's level and pointed towards the sun and then do your readings. Now the paint stick, nail, and block option has a lot of advantages. It's very inexpensive, it's very lightweight, doesn't require any electrical power or a computer. Now, if you want to take the next step up and do this properly, and you have the ability to connect this to a laptop that you can power, this is an Oculus All Sky camera. It goes 180 degrees from horizon to horizon in a 360 degree circle. You set it up, you level it, and turn it on. It will record the sky for 24 hours. And all you have to do is demonstrate that the sun is always visible above the horizon during all of those 24 hours. Now, obviously, you may have times that a cloud passes in front of the sun, but in order to get a good test, you're going to have to demonstrate clear sky below the cloud, and it'll go in one side and it'll come out the other without going below the cloud. However, then you have to apply deductive reasoning to show that because it entered the cloud from one side, exited the other, and never went below it, that the sun was indeed still in the sky. That requires basic deductive reasoning. Which leads me to what I believe is the problem with the final experiment. The problem with the final experiment is that we in the science community have been disproving the flat earth for many years. However, in order to demonstrate that the flat earth is an impossibility, we have to rely on something called deductive reasoning. So for example, uh, recently I put this video out where I looked at the Southern Cross Cable Network and showed conclusively that the cable between Sydney, Australia and Auckland, New Zealand would not fit on a flat earth. It is far too short to stretch the distance that a flat earth would require. However, those in the flat earth do not use deductive reasoning or logic. They don't respect evidence. And I've already heard people talk about the final experiment by saying, oh, the sun can stay up for 24 hours on a flat earth. They won't tell us how. They won't draw a picture and show us the geometry or do any math. They'll just say, well, our belief is that the earth is flat, so therefore, if it occurs, it occurs on a flat earth. So I think that this is going to be somewhat of a wasted effort. However, I am fully supportive of it and I would very much like to see the results of it. Uh, one of the reasons I didn't put in to go to Antarctica myself is that it would be a wasted trip because I already know what's going to happen. 
there are plenty of people that are more than willing to go down there and see it for themselves just to confirm what I already know. I hope that my contribution helps a little bit. There's a lot of other people on the Globe Earth side that are contributing, but we do have a paucity of people from the Flat Earth that are interested in actually putting this matter to rest. So, please be sure to give me a follow. I eagerly await the results of the experiment, and I'll see you again soon. Take care, guys.